Okay, make this really simple so that uh, even a five-year-old or a ten-year-old could understand it. Let's take a look at the uh, AC current lines looking end on. In between we have our dielectric or electrostatic lines of force and going all around that in a circular motion we have our magnetism. Remembering that the ether is the ether is the ether and magnetism, as Faraday and Maxwell called it, the uh, dielectric field. It is a discharge. Mother Nature called, she said she never created a negative charge. There's no such thing. There's only charge, discharge, centrifugal, centripetal. Now, these are our AC current lines looking end on and the cross product of dielectrification and our circulatory magnetism is electrification. Every cross product here where dielectricity and magnetism meets, the same thing in electrification, in creation, that is our electromagnetic AC current circuit. Now let's take a look at a magnet. Now the difference between an AC line chart and a magnet is, of course, you only have two wires going down the pole this way. But the difference is gyromagnetic precession, which only exists in the magnet, and uh, that there's no centripetal reciprocation. There's only circular magnetic spatial reciprocation. Remember, space is only the byproduct of a field. And lastly, the same as our solenoid force. The dielectric is not forced to the center. However, dielectricity is centripetal, counterspatial, and is radial. So, this is our AC current line looking end on down the power line. This isn't my premise. This is an absolute fact. Now let's take a look at a magnet. Remember the dielectric inertial plane is not located at, but concentrated at due to the incommensurable nature of magnetodielectricity at our midpoint. A block wall is a description, it is not an explanation. Here we have, now, we have gyromagnetic precession, we have centripetal reciprocation, because it is a binding system, it is a physical object instead of two AC line, AC current lines, and our dielectricity is forced to the center. So here we have our centrifugal reciprocation, and our centripetal reintegration. Remember the difference between the centripetal, which is convergent, and centrifugal, which is divergent. Centrifugal to centripetal, centrifugal to centripetal. This is our magnet. Okay. So, you probably were taught up in school like I was that 99.9% .9 of an atom is empty space. Look, here we have, let's make it simple, let's make it a, uh, let's make it a helium atom. So, this is 99.9% .9 empty space. So, we have our atomic volume in picometers. So, what is this 99.9% .9 of empty space? That doesn't make any sense. Well, what makes space matter mass massive is only magnetism. Dielectricity is centripetal, is counterspatial, so this makes no sense. What we have here is what you find in atomic orbitals, either complex or simplex. You'll see these online. Here we have our magnetism, some of the complex atomic orbitals they look like this. Wherever you can find the magnetic, which is spatial, remember magnetism is Faraday and Maxwell called it the dielectric field, this would be a complex atomic orbital. Not very complex, but one of the more complex ones, or certainly a lot more complex than this. So here we know we have our space, our magnetic fields and our atomic orbitals. Here we have our nucleus. There's no such thing as empty space. There's only spaces created posterior to a field. Remember, these are only snapshots of atomic action. So wherever we have our magnetic, we know we have our dielectric. So there's our dielectric, and there's our dielectric. 
In a binding system such as a magnet, obviously, our magnetism is always oppositional to our dielectric. We know if we cut a magnet a thousand times, top to bottom, each little slice will have a north pole, and each little slice will have a south pole, and each slice will have a dielectric inertial plane. So, what is the geometry of in a binding system? The maximum inversion between the two oppositional fields. It is a double hyperbola. Remember, this is magnetism. And the inertial plane. Like I said, the inertial plane is forced to, is concentrated at the center of any magnet. When you bring two magnets together, here we have two magnets. Pre avoidance. Here we have our inertial planes. Remember, the lines of avoidance, or what you call attraction, are not radial. They are circular. There's a reason for that, because dielectricity terminates into the creation of mass gravity. The field lines create, this is proven scientifically, a pre-voidance plane of dielectricity. In coming together, our two magnets, in voidance as one, there is no more inertial plane here or here. It is here only. You cannot find this on field viewing film. Here it is right now. So, what does that mean? Electricity terminates as magnetism. It does not terminate into magnetism. This is our magnetic. This is our dielectric component, and this is our electrification in Planck. Magnetism is radiation. Magnetism is termination. We speak of electromagnetism, but we use these terms, we're taught this, but we never think about what it means. Magnetism is radiation. That is why Faraday and Maxwell called it the dielectric field. There's a reason for that. Magnetism is circular, it's spatial. It is radiation. What do you think radiation means? It means the discharge. Electrification and discharge does not terminate into magnetism. It terminates as magnetism. Let's take our atom again and take a look at it. Remember that the empty space nonsense is pure bullocks. Here we have a simplex picture. Very, very simplex. This would just be a, a snapshot of a snapshot as far as what goes on inside the atom. Here we have our dielectric, here we have our magnetic. The intersection of these, we're spinning at superluminal speeds, is electrification. This is charge. Resultantly, any discharge, not negative charge, is magnetism. What is the incommensurable nature of the magnet? Capacitor banks are charged up in the case of our electrified magnets. The current is dumped into discharging coils or magnetizing coils. What happens is an increase in dielectric capacitance, which creates this special geometry. This is called a block wall, but remember, this is just a description. This is a dielectric inertial plane. This is FI, or field incommensurability. Remember what makes mass massive matter is magnetism only. Dielectricity is counterspatial. Let's look at our AC current lines again. I mean, what are we trying to talk about here? We're talking about mag uh, magnetic reciprocation. Remember the difference between AC lines and our magnet is only that the magnet has gyromagnetic precession at the nucleus, which AC current lines obviously don't. Here would be our AC current lines, our alternating current lines, going down the line, looking end on. The other difference is that the dielectricity is not absolutely forced to the center because it is not a binding system in our AC current lines. We just have two wires. Also, there is no centripetal reciprocation. Our AC current lines, we have our magnetism moving in a circular pattern like this around the wires. Our dielectric or electrostatic lines of force like this. 
on the AC current lines. Let's draw some more circular patterns on our AC current lines. Look, here we have our per perfect cross section of a magnet. Now this is as far as it goes between comparing AC current lines and a magnet. But this is it. The difference being now we have mutual conjugate reciprocation between the magnetodielectricity of our magnet system, centrifugal, divergent, centripetal, convergent. Same thing from the other side. This would be our centripetal convergent. It's like a tornado, max velocity is at the apex. This is convergence. Centripetal max velocity is, of course, at the apex. Just like pulling the drain plug. Max velocity on a centripetal is at the boundary between where dielectricity and the physical binding system ends. That is why any Gauss meter will tell you if you actually look top down on a magnet, Max velocity is here along the rim and right here at the central center because we have terminal velocity here, which can't be measured via, via Gauss meter, but we have a max, uh, max Gauss reading here and at our centrifugal lines of divergence in our magnetic system. So Now people think, well, it's a magnet, you know, it's got magnetism. Well, that's not what's driving a magnet. We know definitionally that magnetism is radiation. So what's driving the magnet? There's two ways to get a magnet. You can charge capacitor banks, you can dump it into the coils and increase the dielectric capacitance and create your incommensurate system, which you quote unquote call a magnet. But, or you can create it obviously by taking a strong magnet and stroking a screwdriver or soft iron bar and create weak, uh, weak uh, magnetic coherency, but you're not increasing the dielectric capacitance in the soft iron. That's why it has such a weak magnetic field, and it's also easy to reverse the polarity on the ferrous object or the soft iron bar. So, what is the magnet? What is field incommensurability? What, like our dog on a chain tied to a pole, is the maximum throw between two oppositional fields? People say, well, I'll look at the magnet underneath the uh, viewing film, and I see this. I see a dielectric inertial plane or the block wall, which is a description, not an explanation. I don't know what it is, but you know that kind of tells me this is the South Pole and this is the North Pole. Well, that doesn't mean anything. This is, let me show you the difference between the three fields and a magnet. All three of these are the same thing, the magnet. Let's show you the different fields between the three parts of the magnet. All three of these are the same. This is our dielectric field within the magnet because magnetism forces it, directs it to the center. It is incommensurable within the system. This is our centrifugal magnetism and this is our centripetal magnetism returning. You combine these three together and you get the magnet. This is divergence returning to centripetal. This is convergence centripetal. This is centrifugal, divergence, max velocity, just like cracking a whip. Your wrist is not moving very much, but the end of the whip is breaking the sound barrier. That's why max velocity on a Gauss meter is here, and max velocity for centripetal is here. It would be here, but you can't measure it here with a Gauss meter, obviously. You combine these three fields, and this is our divergent centrifugal magnetism, and you have the magnetodielectric incommensurate system of a magnet is simplex but not simple. It's the same thing we see in our AC current lines.